Hey, what's up guys? David here from Dignited. Today, I want to walk through my top tips and tricks of Chromebook. So I've been using my Galaxy Chromebook Go here for about one year. And I just want to share some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over time with you and how you can use them to maximize your productivity on your Chromebook. All right, let's get into it. All right, so I'll kick off with one of the most asked questions about Chromebooks, and that is from people that are coming from a Windows background. Family and friends always ask me, so how do I access my Microsoft Words, Excel, and so forth on a Chromebook? And that is a tricky question because Chromebooks are developed by Google, which, as you know, has competing products with Microsoft. So Microsoft has Microsoft Office, whereas Google has Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides, and so forth. So Microsoft Office is not natively supported on Chromebook. However, you can access it through the online version, and that is Microsoft 365. So if you don't mind accessing Microsoft Office through your web browser, then Chromebooks are really perfect for you when it comes to using the Microsoft suite. All right, the other tip I want to share with you is to how to customize your Chromebook. So Chromebooks are highly customizable. You can change your wallpaper here with the Chromebook. You can choose from the pre-built wallpapers that ship with the Chromebook, or you can use any image that you've downloaded from the internet and use it as your wallpaper. You can also change things like a uh, screen server. You can change a number of other things with your Chromebook. All right, the next tip I want to show you is how you can connect your Android phone to your Chromebook. So Android is developed by Google, as you know, and so are Chromebooks. So there is a really tight integration between Android and Chrome OS, just like you have iPhone and Mac OS integration. With this integration, you can view recent photos, browser tabs, app notifications on your Chromebook, right? You can also locate your phone, turn on your mobile hotspot, and then share your phone's internet with your Chromebook. And that is really, really cool. It's one of the things that I love about Chromebooks. All right, the next tip I want to share with you guys is how to access Linux on your Chromebook. So Linux started being supported in 2017, and that means that you can now bring full desktop applications that are based on Linux to your Chromebook. You can install things like Visual Studio, which is an IDE for coding. You can install VLC, LibreOffice, which is like Microsoft Office, but open source and mostly used on Linux. You can install install Firefox in addition to Chrome OS, among other things. Now, Linux is not enabled by default on Chromebooks, and to do that, you have to come to Settings, and then come to Advanced, and then you come to Developers, and then just here where it says Linux Development Environment, you can enable it. I did a video on how to do it, and you can watch it. Next, you can use Android apps on your Chromebook. So you have access to over a million Android apps on the Google Play Store, and you can use these on your Chromebook. Now, that is really great, although the Android apps are really developed for small screens on your phone, and they may not really scale well with your Chromebook. But it is comforting to know that you have access to all of these applications on your Chromebook which is really great. So some of the apps that I use are Telegram, you have WhatsApp, uh, Spotify, Twitter, and so forth. All these are mobile Android apps that I now use on my Chromebook. Another tip that I want to share with you is to how to use the Google Assistant on your Chromebook. Now, the Google Assistant, as you know, is the artificial intelligence driven smart assistant developed by Google and is mostly used on your Android phone and smart speakers. But this software is also integrated natively on your Chromebook and you can access it by clicking on the launcher icon here or you can click on the search button here on your keyboard and right here you can just uh, send email open files you can control your smart home and a number of things another tip i want to share with you guys is how to turn on dark mode on your chromebook so just like your smartphone or windows pc or mac you also have dark mode on the chromebook dark mode is really great at night time you can use it at night time because it's easy on the eyes 
and to enable it just right click on your desktop here come to set wallpaper and style and then you can come under theme here you have light dark and auto so i set it to auto so that i have the light theme during the day and the dark theme automatically turns on at sunset most of the native apps have dark mode support like the files app the system settings uh the shelf and so forth Another thing I want to share with you guys is how to use a VPN on your Chromebook. Now, Chromebooks have built-in VPN support. You can access the built-in VPN client by going to settings, and then you come to network, and then you come to VPN right here, and then you can just tap on this plus button. And you have these form fields that you can use to fill in all the parameters that your VPN provider supports. Now, I didn't really find this particularly helpful because there are certain parameters that the built-in client does not have, yet my VPN provider needs me to add them to my Chromebook in order to connect to the VPN. So the best way to really connect to a VPN on your Chromebook is to simply download the Android app versions of your VPN provider. And you can again go to the Google Play Store here and then search for your VPN of choice, whether that is ExpressVPN or Surfshark, and then you download it and install it on your Chromebook, it will automatically create a VPN profile and connect you to the VPN. No need to hustle with all these complex configurations here of the built-in client. Another thing I want to share with you guys is how you can use split screen feature on your Chromebook. So split screen is particularly helpful if you have two applications and you want to use them side by side I did a full video of uh, how to do that, but my best way is to use shortcuts, and that is Alt, and go bracket here, and then you come to this other window, and just do Alt, and go left bracket, and you can now use two applications side by side on your Chromebook. So that is really cool for those who want to multitask that way. Another tip that I want to share with you guys is how to cast your Chromebook to the TV. If you want, you can take advantage of the big screen of your smart TV and you can cast the Chrome tab for your full Chromebook screen to your smart TV. So this is really helpful if you have a presentation, a demo, or you have a movie that you want to watch with your friends and family when they come over can take advantage of the big screen of your smart tv so i already did a video on how to do that just watch that video to see how to do it another tip that i want to share with you guys is how to turn on caps lock when i bought my chromebook that was the first thing that puzzled me it was like okay i don't see the caps lock key on my chromebook so how do you turn it on if you just looked at your Chromebook keyboard here, there is no caps lock. So the way that you turn on caps lock is via a keyboard shortcut, and that is Alt and then the search key or the everything key. Caps lock comes on, and to turn it off, do exactly that. Alt and then the search key, and then it goes off. Now, if you don't want to use two keyboard shortcuts, you can remap your keyboard and assign a specific key, for example, the search key to become your caps lock if you really use it very frequently. You can do that. The next tip I want to share with you guys is how to use your Chromebook offline. Now, we know that Chromebooks are particularly cloud lightweight laptops. They primarily work well with the internet. But if you're traveling or you go somewhere where the internet is spotty or is absolutely not available, what are you going to do? Well, it turns out some applications have offline support and that is primarily Google's productivity tools. That is uh, docs, slides, and sheets. So to turn on offline mode on docs, for example, simply open up docs here. All right, come to settings and then toggle offline mode. Right, so now you can, you know, just work with your documents without an internet connection. So that works well with docs, but not all applications support offline mode. So just take note of that. 
Another tip I want to share with you guys is how to organize your workspace with virtual desks, right? So just like Mac or Windows, Chromebooks also have virtual desks. Now with virtual desks, you can organize your workflow into different segments, for example, work or entertainment. I like to have my serious work under one virtual desk and then my social media feeds, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter on a different virtual desk, right? So to access your virtual desk, simply press the show windows uh, key right there on your keyboard. And you can see I have desk one here. And if you want another desk, just uh, tap on the plus icon, name your desk, and then you can tap on that workspace right there. And this is where you're going to, you know, just open different applications that fit that virtual desk. And when you want to switch, again, just press the show windows key there and then tap on the virtual desk that you want. Alternatively, you can use your three fingers and then just swipe up right here on the touchpad. I think that is faster for people who are used to shortcuts. Right. Another tip I want to share with you guys is how to restart your Chromebook. So when you come to the Chromebook UI here, there's really no restart. There is only the shutdown icon right here. So this is the way that you restart your Chromebook, believe it or not, right? You're going to click on this shutdown icon right here from the system tray down here. It is going to completely shut down and then you'll have to manually press this little power button on your keyboard to start your Chromebook again. I don't know why they did this, but this is how it is. You can also just press the power key here on your keyboard for just a few seconds. And that brings up this little toolbar here, which has shutdown, sign out, lock, or feedback. Now, you can also use your Chromebook keyboard to restart your Chromebook, which again, simply shuts down your computer and you have to restart it manually. And what you do is you press the power key here on your keyboard for about three seconds, and that is going to shut down your Chromebook and you start it again. Alternatively, you can also hard reset your Chromebook and you can do that using these keyboard shortcuts. Press the refresh button and then the power button right here. And that is going to add reboot your Chromebook. Keep in mind that any unsaved work is going to be lost if you do that. Another tip that I want to talk about is how to take screenshots and screen recording on your Chromebook. As you can tell, I'm already doing a screencast of this Chromebook because I'm doing this tutorial and I love the built-in tools here. They are really, really much better than Windows and they kind of rival Mac OS, right? You can take screenshots of your Chromebook, any window or application and it's saved in PNG. To take screenshot, you can just press Ctrl and then the switch window key here. And you can also take a screencast or a screen recording of your Chromebook. And that is going to capture your face using the built-in webcam. And you can also capture your audio if you plug in a microphone or use the built-in microphone. So to take a screen recording, simply press Ctrl Alt and then this switch window. So that will start a screencast and that is great if you're doing product demos or tutorials or doing a lecture or a lesson. All right, so uh, bonus points here on some tips on using your Chromebook. Uh, you can take advantage of the built-in file manager. This is the file explorer. The file explorer is also called the files app here. It is really minimalistic right here, but don't be deceived. You have the downloads uh, folder by default, but it doesn't stop you from, you know, creating additional folders, you know, akin to Windows, such as pictures or videos or um, documents and so forth. And then you can organize your files and folders accordingly. But I like the minimalism 
here there is less clutter right here you also have google drive built in and supported in the files app so if you have your files on the cloud you can access them on your chromebook and whatever you do here is automatically saved to the cloud and so no worry about losing your data and so forth because this is backed up to the cloud you also have the ability to access network drives right here. So if you have files, say for example, in a NAS drive, or you want to access a Windows shared folder, you can definitely do that from the built-in files app. So I did a video of how you can do it. And uh, yeah, I suggest that you watch it if you want to find out how. Right, the last tip I want to share with you guys is how to reset your Chromebook uh, using PowerWash. And to do that, simply come to settings here and then come to advanced and then reset settings. And you can see there is PowerWash here. It removes all accounts and resets your Chrome device to just like new. So if you want to give away your Chromebook or if it is becoming slow and you don't know what the problem is, you can just simply factory reset it and it will just work just as new. And when you sign in, all your settings will come back because they're backed up to your Google account. All right, guys. So those are my top 17 ish tips of how to make the most out of your Chromebook. If you found this tutorial helpful, go ahead and give us a like, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell icon so you don't miss out on future videos. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.